Okay, so in this video we're going to look at the situation where you need more than one table in your database. Now um, remember we're dealing with uh, relational databases which is where our, our data is stored in tables. It's slightly different in object oriented situations. So uh, this is purely for relational. Um, and I'm just going to start with this example here where I had in the last video a table of or for people, or for person I've called it. Uh, and you can see we, we've stored some information about each person. Now um, what we're going to do is set up another table then for the job that they might have. Now um, it might seem that you could create another column for the job in this table, but then you'd end up having to retype the name of that job into it each time you entered a new person. And um, when you're creating a database you should really look to have anything that will be repeated, such as like the jobs that people might belong to or the categories of products in a, um, a catalogue. Um, those should all go in their own table and then what we do is we link those two tables. So uh, to give you an idea, um, what I'm going to do is create a new table. So I'll go back to my database page. I'm just going to create a page, uh, table called job with two columns and the two columns are simply going to be job ID which is our unique identifier. So I'm just going to give that a length of two, primary key, auto increment, just the usual stuff and then the name of the job, which I'll make varchar because it's going to be quite short text. Okay, so um, a job, actually I'll just insert a couple in here, um, I'll put in teacher and dentist, there we go. Um, so we've got a table here, or two tables with job and person. Now each job is going to be known by uh, the ID, not the name of the job. So what we need to do in our in our person table is actually have a field that um, shows the job ID. So if I go back to the person table, what I would need to do in my structure here is add one more we are, one more column at the end and call it job ID. And again, that, that will be integer length of two. Now this is not the primary key in this table, so I do not need to change anything else. And um, if I just go back to my person table here and browse it, you can see that um, the three people that I've created, none of them belong to a job. But if, say, I decide that the first two are going to be teachers, um, and then Fred Thompson is my dentist, um, you can see how I've linked them. So this is actually referring to the ID of the job rather than the name. And the advantages of that, of course, are that when we set up our own um, control panel, we can now choose the jobs that a person uh, belongs to from a drop-down list. Uh, or if we need to change the spelling uh, or the name of a particular job, we can just do it once in the other table. And of course, we don't have to go through every single record um, individually. So it just becomes more efficient. And then to give you an idea of what the code might look, if you want to pull out, say, all the person's details, as well as, say, the, um, the name of the job, if we just run a quick um, query here, uh, it would be something like, I want to select um, what from the person table, we want to select everything, and then from the job table we're going to select the name. So then uh, the primary table I'm selecting from is person, but I just need to do a join. So I'm going to join the job table on, so join job, and the criteria we're joining it on is that in the person table there will be a job ID field. When we say equals, I mean just go to the job table and find the job that matches that particular ID. So you can see those two things there should match. So if I hit go, what that does now is it returns all the information from that job table along with, oh sorry, from the person table along with the names of the jobs. Okay, so that's a really simple example of a situation where you might need multiple tables and how you would write an SQL query. Now that's called a a join. So you can see there how we do it. Um, we have to specify in a join, we have to specify the table that we're selecting information from. Uh, remembering that asterisk means that we're selecting everything from that person table. And then from the job table we're only selecting the name. Okay, so that's the, uh, the first simpler situation. Uh, a second more complicated situation might be, um, for example, what would happen if uh, somebody could have multiple jobs? So um, John Smith here might actually be a teacher and freelance as a dentist, for example. So um, our table structure then would need to look slightly different. So this table structure here is fine where there's just going to be one 
particular entry. But if you um, have that situation where someone could belong to two categories, then we need to change things up a bit. So what I'm just going to do here then is, in my person table, I'm just going to remove that job ID. So we're not going to put the link in this table. So what we have now is a table with all the information about the person. And, oh, it's better here. So we have two tables, one with all the information about the jobs, one with all the information about the people. And what we do is we're going to create um, like an interim table or a linking table between the two ta between these two existing tables. So I'm going to call this one just purely because it's very obvious as to um, what two tables it's linking. I'm going to call it person job. And this is going to have three columns. It's going to have its own unique ID, but also then it's going to have the ID of the person and the ID of the job they belong to. So if I just hit go, I'll give it its as usual, it's primary key, um, so that you can see primary key, auto increment. Then it's going to then going to have to have the, the identifier from the first table that it's linking, which in this case was the person table, so person ID. And it needs to have the identifier from the second table it's linking, which in this case is the job ID. So you see now that person and job, these are the two tables that have been linking, linked, and those are the primary keys from each of those two tables. Okay, so um, just to quickly go back to the person table and browse there, you can see I've got John Smith. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna make John both a teacher and a dentist. So if I go to the person job table and insert a record here, John was person number three, I believe, and oh, actually, I need to go back and find out what job dentist was okay one and two there okay so back we go this time um okay so john who's person number three is a teacher john who is person number three is also a dentist and i'll just add a few more records here um the next person on the table who was record four is also a teacher and the last person there is a dentist as well okay so when we look at our table here, it's just full of numbers, but this is our linking table. It sits in between person and job. And so there you can see there's the person there who belongs to two different jobs, person three. So that's how we set up the tables. The, um, the actual SQL to retrieve this information is a little trickier than the last one. So um, let's just go through that now. Uh, it is gonna be another select. This time the person job table, our linking table is our primary one. So from person job, uh, I'm going to select everything, and then from the person table, uh, I'm going to select. Actually, I'm going to select everything again, and then from the job table, all I need is the name of the job. So this is just going to select some information from each table. So then we say from, and I specify what is the primary table I'm selecting from. In this case, it's person job, uh, and now I need to join on. The other two tables that we're link that it, this is linking. So I say join, and then it's going to be person on. In this case, I go person job dot person ID. So that's taking the person ID from this linking table, and go to the person table and find that that record that matches that ID. I also want to join the job table on, and again from the person job our linking table dot job ID, take that ID, go to the job table, and find the job ID that matches. So that there should hopefully bring back all of them. And there you go, you can see what it's done, thankfully that worked. You can see it's brought back both John Smith's records there, both him as a teacher and him as a dentist. So it brings back all four records from the person job, our linking table. Um, and you can see it is handled successfully somebody who belongs to two. And of course you could then filter that and say, well, here's my selection in my SQL. I could filter that and say, well, we're, um, what am I looking for here? Uh, person job dot job ID equals two. So this should only bring back the dentists. So when I hit go, there you go. You can see it's brought back both John Smith and Fred Thompson. And it's completely unaffected by the fact that John Smith is also a teacher. It handles uh, him being signed up with multiple jobs. 
Okay, so that's very quick, I know, uh, but that's a quick walkthrough on how to handle situations with multiple tables.